Hello, everyone. This is Richard from Modern Healthspan. Today, we'll look at a recent paper showing that excessive senescent cells can slow the process of bone repair. One of the benefits of senescent cells is their role in wound healing, but it seems that if there's too many of them, they may have a negative impact, at least in bone repair. Another interesting part of the study is the short-term use of senolytics for an acute injury. Before we get into the paper, a disclaimer that in this video, we are sharing a study that we found interesting. It is not a recommendation or medical advice. Here is the paper. Age-associated callous senescent cells produce TGF-beta-1 that inhibits fracture healing in aged mice. Cellular senescence has been shown to be involved in diseases such as osteoporosis and osteoarthritis. Increased presence of senescent cells and delayed healing of bones is common in elderly people, but the link between these two has not been studied. In this study, they show in a mouse model using four-month and 12-month-old mice that the older mice saw a bigger increase in senescent cells in the fracture callus. They show that the senolytics, dasatinib, and quercetin improved the healing. And in particular, the expression of TGF-beta-1 or transforming growth factor beta-1 was the main cause of this and inhibiting TGF-beta-1 improved the fracture outcome. Short-term administration of quercetin and dasatinib lowered the senescent cell burden and accelerated the fracture healing in aged mice, showing a possible use to support bone repair in the elderly. What is a callus? This is the structure that forms around the fracture point inside of which the repair and bone remodeling process takes place. In the study, they used four-month and 12-month-old mice, which is about equivalent to a 21 and 58-year-old human respectively. The hypothesis was that in aged mice, there was an excess of senescent cells, which produced excessive TGF-beta-1. This inhibited the fracture repair and removing the TGF-beta-1 would reverse this effect. So the first thing they looked at was the level of senescent cells in the fracture callus. In this and in subsequent graphs, DPF is days past fracture. So how many days since the bone was fractured? P16 and P21 are two common markers of senescent cells. In the aged mice, shown in blue circles in both graphs, these were much higher than in the younger mice, shown with black triangles. It's worth noting this break in the P16 graph, showing that this increase is larger than the graph would imply. So we can see that the increase in senescent cells in the fracture callus was much larger in the aged mice. So the next task was to show that removing the senescent cells improved the healing of the bone. They did this by providing the mice with senolytics, desatinib and quercetin. In contrast to the normal long-term treatment, the drug was administered on days one, three, five, and seven after the fracture, with the aim of specifically impacting the senescent cells which formed during the fracture. The doses were given orally and were five milligrams per kilogram for desatinib and 50 milligrams per kilogram for quercetin. Using the normal allosteric conversion factor of 12.2, this gives an equivalent of 0.41 and 4.1 milligrams per kilogram for humans, or 28.7 and 287 milligrams for a 70 kilogram person. Here is the expression of P16 and P21. We can see that in the young mice, the expression is low and the DNQ did not change this much. However, the expression in older mice was much higher, and this was lowered to the same level as young mice by DNQ. Also, looking at the various measures of the quality of the repaired bone, such as stiffness, strength, and toughness, we can see that the DNQ treatment significantly improved them. So this looks interesting as a possible treatment for the healing of bone fractures in older adults. In the same issue, there was a commentary article published sharing some thoughts on the original paper. I would just highlight a couple of points from the commentary paper. They start off noting what the study saw, that the short-term administration of DNQ improved fracture healing in older mice, but not younger ones. They point out that getting the time window right is critical to maximize the therapeutic effect. And the dose and timing may vary with the person's age. 
Also, as there are individual differences in the rate of aging, some form of marker would be required, such as circulating SAS factors, to identify the level of senescent cells and so the appropriate dose. Senescent cells are quite diverse and can be important mediators of regeneration in some contexts while detrimental in others, which adds to the need to get the proper timing and duration of the delivery to limit off-target effects. Some senescent cells are required for bone repair, so excessive depletion would have negative consequences. Macrophages, which are required for bone repair, also express some of the same markers, such as P16 and SA-beta-gal, as senescent cells, so systemic depletion of all cells with these markers could be counterproductive. So this does seem promising, but we need to understand the different forms of senescent cells and how they respond to senolytics. So as Professor Robbins mentioned in his interview with us, the NIA has established a fund for the purpose of mapping senescent cells. This database could then shed light on different phenotypes, how the phenotypes function, and whether they would be beneficial or detrimental to tissue repair, and from this help in guiding the dosage and timing. So an interesting study on another way that senolytic drugs can be used in therapy, and great to see a focus on understanding them better. <music>